بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما رب الشرح لصدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته first and foremost رمضان مبارك to all of you may Allah bless you and protect you and give you the best of this world and hereafter may Allah make us better at the end of this wonderful month uh, than how we entered this wonderful month. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. Today, inshallah, we're going to talk about love, this beautiful, warm feeling that we have and that we feel towards usually our, the members of our family, like our mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters. And um, to me, for example, a sign of love or uh, one of the uh, representations of love in this world is the, that connection between a mother and a child. It's always special to see love uh, so wonderfully seen on a face and so wonderfully seen on the sacrifices that especially mother does for her child um, because of what she's feeling, because of that instinct, motherly instinct that Allah has given to her. Today, inshallah, we're going to talk about a different type of love. And the first thing I'm going to ask, first and foremost, myself, and I invite all of you to ask yourselves as well, is do I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I'm assuming that the question to that this question is going to be answered like yes for most of us. And um, then I would then follow up this question by saying, what is your proof? What is my proof first that I truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do I see that in my daily life, in what I'm doing, in what I'm saying, in what I'm feeling, what I'm looking at, what I'm not looking at, or what I'm not doing or saying, etc. So today, our session, inshallah, is going to be focused on that. What are some of the signs that I can see in my daily life that tell me, do I really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, most of these points are derived from a wonderful book by Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, and this is a recommendation for further reading. Uh, the book is called Rawdatul Muhibbin, and uh, it's it talks about love, all of that book. So it's beautiful, beautiful, and I really recommend checking it out and inshallah taking a lot of lessons and um, understandings of love in general for our daily lives. So Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, among other things, says that one of the signs that I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that I long for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. Like imagine when I have a, when we have a good friend or if we have our spouse, spouse, our husband or a wife and he or she has to go to travel uh, for a business trip, let's say for a few days or a few, few weeks, weeks or a month or so. And uh, for all of that month, or those weeks when we're apart from each other, subhanAllah, there is this sense of longing and missing each other out. And we usually share that with our spouses. I miss you so much. I can't wait to see you. I love you, etc. That love uh, is, the, that's the way that love is visible on us. So in my life, if I feel in my heart that I'm longing to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that I'm longing to uh, see Allah, to be with Him, to just be in His company, and to finally meet Him again after our first um, our first gathering, so to say, and in, uh, in a distance, distance time from this one or from a, a long time ago. To see my Lord again, to feel that longing in my heart, to meet him again and to tell him, Ya Allah, I have di divided or I have um, given to you my whole life. Isn't that something that our hearts are longing for? So if our lo hearts are longing for Allah and wanting to see him, wanting to meet him, wanting to be with him, that's the sign. That's one of the signs that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you can see, some of these signs are going to be a part of the heart of the, what our feelings are. Some of them are going to be more in, uh, towards uh, our actions or uh, sayings, etc. Second thing or second way I can see in my life 
that I truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by seeing how much I remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my daily life. So when we love someone, especially when we love our spouses, we usually think about them very often. When they go to work, we think about how we're going to see each other again and um, at dinner, let's say, and spend some time together. And we think about how much we love them. We think about how we want to help them or how we want uh, things not bad things not to happen to them. And we just love speaking about those people because speaking about those people gives us pleasure and love and this um, a wonderful sensation and a beautiful feeling inside. So... The way I can see in my life, if I truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is by seeing how much I remember Him, first and foremost, in my heart. How much my heart remembers Allah? What is the first thing that comes to my mind in the morning? What is the last thing that I remember before I go to sleep? Um, what, are the, what is the thing that I remember the most during the day? What I want to please the most? that I want to talk about the most, that I want my, to dedicate my day to. That's the subject of my love. If Allah is the one I remember every day, that I wake up with his name, that I go to sleep with his name, that I during the day that uh, I love to mention his name in my adhkar, in my salah, in the way I'm, when I'm speaking to people. If um, I love to do things for him. If I want, like to uh, do evkar, as I said, if I like to do salah, if I want to do more and more of that, remember him more and more, that is a sign that I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. <clears throat> Another sign that, I, that we love Allah is if we are obedient to the orders of the one who, are, who we love, and not only that, that we give preference to what the subject of our love is over what we love, subhanAllah. So, for example, all of us love to sleep, <laughs> especially when we're, la when we're having a lack of sleep and we, we, when we're in the desperate need of it. Um, but then still, you can see that mother that wakes up in the middle of the night to let's say cook a few dishes of food for her children so they can have something to eat tomorrow when she goes to work. We still see that mother or father who buys something that they, or who doesn't buy something for themselves, but they do buy something for their children, even though they themselves need something more. That's when they give to those who they love something over um or whether, whether they prefer something that the beloved of theirs needs over something that they themselves need so in my daily life for example how do i see that i love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing what he loves me to do or what he ordered me to do what he asked me to do like um if he asked me to pray every day if he asked me to 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 fast if he asked me to Put my hijab on if we ask me to take care of how i look and into people how i speak how what i do what i do or what i don't do in my daily life then because i love allah i will give preference to what he loves for me over what i love for me for myself so if that means waking up in the uh, in the morning and um, praying fajr even though i love to sleep i will do that because i love allah if that means that I will put my hijab on, even though that I love the way I look, I like to show my beauty, I like to be the beautiful one in the room, I will still put my hijab on because I love what Allah loves for me more than I love what I love for myself. SubhanAllah. Um, if I'm in a gathering of people and they start speaking ill of someone, and they start, start chatting, they start gossiping. Because I love Allah, I will not speak ill of people because that's something that my beloved would not love me or like me to do in my life, in that gathering, in that place without those people. So uh, a sign that I love Allah is that I'm obedient to him 
towards what he loves me or asks me to do and that I give preference to what he loves me to do over what I love for myself to do subhanallah also for example lowering our gaze when we're talking to him remember for example when you were in awe of someone like someone whom you really respect and then you start speaking to that person like your teacher or like someone that you really really highly love and respect and you start talking to that person and then you suddenly feel yourself that you're getting shy and then you're, you're like lowering your gaze down you're put, like uh, your gaze um, your eyes go naturally down because you're shy to look even into the eyes of the person that you're talking to that's how shy you are or that's how you much you love them that you can't even kind of hold yourself strong when you're in that in the in the presence of that person you just lose yourself you know, lose your mind so to say in a way so how does this how is this visible in my connection to allah how is this visible in my relationship to allah when i stand for salah when I stand for to pray, that I put my gaze down and I don't look around when I'm praying and talking to my Allah, my most beloved one in the salah. When I'm making dua to Allah, when I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what I need in my daily life or what I need for my family, for my friends, for my beloved ones in my life, I'm putting down my gaze because I know that my beloved is listening. I know that my beloved is hearing what I'm saying. And he will say yes to everything that I ask him to do or that I, that I ask him to remove from my life or from my family, etc. Because I know that's my beloved. I know my beloved. I know who he is. And I know he will never let me down. So that natural lowering of the gaze out of respect out of love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sign that we love him and another way of lowering the gaze is to not look at what our beloved does not love me to look at so for example if i love my husband then i'm gonna take care or i'm not gonna look at other men and spend time watching them seeing what they're doing seeing how they're looking etc because i know that my husband would not like me to look at other people in that way so because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my beloved and i want him to be my beloved i'm not gonna look at other people um, or i'm not gonna spend my um, eyes or i'm not gonna waste my gaze on the things that he does not love me to look at or to see this also includes watching things, looking at um, at something, um, watching something that is in the gray zone, at, at least, not to even say that it's maybe haram or makruh, etc. So um, looking at what Allah loves me to look at, staying away from watching that he, what he does not love me to watch is a sign that I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanAllah. When we speak to our people that we love and when they speak to us well, while they're speaking to us what happened is happening is that we're kind of so much focused on what they're saying that we're carefully carefully listening to their words and we're kind of sinking all of their each of their words are sinking into our hearts into our minds um into our souls basically and there are like these moments and we like sometimes it can pass 10 years 20 years 15 years and then you still remember when that one person that you love what they, they told you like you sometimes you remind them about that and we say do you remember when you told me this and that like 15 or 10 20 years ago i could never forget that moment when you told me that because that sticked into your mind because those words of that person um, meant for you something meant something for you subhanallah so how should i look into this to build my relationship of love towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by l listening to what he has to tell me and the way he has spoken to me is something that is already known it is the quran so in order for me to love allah to show allah that i love him is by listening to his words his words in the quran his messages 
and especially paying attention to those messages and understanding those messages so that they can stick to my heart and I can never forget them. Subhanallah. It's like when someone who, as I told, as I said, when someone whom you love told you something, imagine something, what is something that Allah is telling you, is telling me in the Quran that I need to listen to, that is important for me? Because when someone loves you, they will tell you what you need to listen, what, what you need to know, what is important for you. They will not always tell you the, the pleasant things because um, the person who loves you, they will they, they want the best for you. They want that you succeed in this world. They want you to succeed in the next uh, world, etc. So the, the question is, my most beloved Allah, who loves me more than anyone else that I have in my life, what does he uh, tell me? What is he telling me in his book? What is he recommending me to do? What is he telling me to pay attention to or telling me to avoid or telling me to do or telling me to think about? Like let those words of Allah as the most beloved one sink into your heart. Read the Quran as if you're reading a love letter from someone that loves you the most. And how would you read that letter? Imagine yourself in that moment. How would I read the letter from someone who loves me the most. What what am I going to pay attention to? What I'm going to how I'm going to listen and how how am I going to listen to them? Uh, how their words are going to affect me, and how am I going to change and uh, adjust based on what they ask me to do? So that's my beloved, and that's how I see or listen to his words. Um, a wonderful way of showing love is by sacrifice. And mothers, I would say, would understand this the best. As I told you before, the mothers who wake up in the middle of the night just to quick cook, uh, cook something for their children because they love them. They sacrifice their sleep. Maybe even it affected their health. Uh, it affected the time that they have for themselves, etc. But they were willing to sacrifice all of that because that would mean that they would please you as the person who they love so much. The same we do for, for our parents whom we love. The same we do, we do for our spouses whom we again love so much. And we sacrifice things in our daily life so that we can please the one that we love. It's just so because we feel so happy when the one that we love is happy with us or is happy with something that we did. And we're willing so much to to spend our um, to sacrifice our time, our energy, our money, um, all of our resources just to please that person because we want to see that person happy with us. We want them to stay with us as long as possible. So how do we see the sacrifice in uh, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Again, the same, we look into our resources and we see and we say, Ya Allah, what can I sacrifice for you today? Is it my time that I'm going to spend more time with you by praying, by doing dhikr, by thinking about your signs that you have given to me around myself and in myself? Is it going to be the time that I'm going to spend on my Quran? Is it going to be the time that I'm going to spend um, on giving something, giving charity to people or doing zakah or going to hajj or for umrah? Um, is it the money or is it something else that I'm going to spend or sacrifice for the sake of Allah just for the reason because we love Allah? And we will see that the more I'm willing to sacrifice for Allah in my time, in my money, in my energy, in um, everything that I possess, basically, just to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more that shows our love towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, when we love someone, we're a little bit jealous when he or she is speaking to another person we just want them for ourselves basically and uh, uh, it, though that's a type of a love that is usually mostly visible in the spouses like when they when they want each other for themselves and it's very kind of uh, sometimes very hard for them to look into their spouses talking to someone else etc so um, 
how do we see jealousy in our love towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By looking to two things. I need to be, in order for me to love Allah fully, or uh, if I want to look into how much I love Allah, I need to look into two things. How jealous I am in my own disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how jealous I am in other people's disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what does this mean? When I think about doing a sin, when I think about sinning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing something that he doesn't love, uh, disobeying him in any way, that my thought is, how can I do this to my beloved? How can I do this to someone who loves me so much? Or how can I do this to someone I love so much? I cannot do this to him. I cannot do this because of him, because he would not love me or like me to do. Or when we um, or look into how be that beloved is. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So who is Allah? Is he the most merciful? Is he the most generous? Is he the most noble? Is he the most high? Does he deserve this behavior? after everything that he has done for us or after everything he is doing for us in every, every single day in every single moment like you look into you look into our bodies our hearts are beating with like every day without any stop and we don't have to think about it we don't have to think about how hearts work we are breathing the air in our lungs are working every day but we're not thinking about or telling our lungs please like breathe this much air into into yourself today or breathe out this much air out we're not telling our hands or our legs please move so i can take something from the table or i can walk from a place to a place it's just working but there needs to be someone and there is someone who is every day and every moment taking care of that function of my body and that, that is allah he he whom I love and I need so much in my life, does not deserve to be disobeyed. He is above all of that. But on the other hand, I need to be aware that it's not affecting him. It's only affecting me. And the way I can truly love the one who deserves to be loved the most. So being jealous uh, of any type of disobedience to Allah, out of love towards Allah, is something that is a sign that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are two more signs that we love Allah. One of them is wanting to be alone with Him, which is another beautiful, beautiful, I would say, sign. SubhanAllah, just as we like, when we have that friend whom we love so much, and we love to spend time with that friend, we use any time or any moment that we ha can to be alone with them so that we just can spend that time together. SubhanAllah. The same goes with our relationship with Allah. One of the signs that I love Allah is that I tend to spend my time with Allah alone, without any people, without anyone around me, just to be with Him, with my dhikr, with my Qur'an, with my salah, with my dua, with uh, seeking Islamic knowledge, with anything that is getting um, to please him. Like in my thoughts, in my heart, that I feel, Ya Allah, I am with you. I need you. You are with me and you, you, you are constantly with me. And I can constantly feel your presence in the way that I'm seeing your signs around me, inside of me, in the Quran, in everything that I have. So um, um, spending time alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a way or a sign that we love Allah. And we also, for, on the other hand, hate anything that can become like a barrier between uh, our time with uh, our alone time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you can look into that like physically like uh, when someone wants to uh, cross your path when you're praying like you can physically remove that person uh, so that he or she cannot um, stand like say in that way between you and Allah that's what Imam Ibn Qayyim for example says and another way is that when your heart that I'm so focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I don't let anything in my heart in my thoughts 
other than what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is a sign that I'm staying alone with him and that I love him. And finally, and probably one of the most, most important one uh, portions or signs that I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or ways that I can improve my love towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that I love no one like I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah does not like to share, as Sheikh Haitha says usually, that I love no one in my life the way that I love Allah. Why? Because no one is worthy of love in my life the way Allah is worthy of that love. No one is the source of love in my life the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of love in my life. No one is equal to giving love like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one is able or capable of giving life like or, or or love in my life like Allah is subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he deserves that place in my heart. He deserves to be number one and to be the only one as the number one in my life. And he deserves to not share that place of number one in my heart with anyone else in my life. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us that we love him, that we love him truly with our hearts, fully sharing nothing in our hearts with, with him. May, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who love him like they know, love no one else. May Allah make us so that we love other people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. I, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who start to love other people or hate other people because of what they do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, may Allah, for example, subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who in our hearts, in our words, in our deeds, show every single sign that we truly, completely love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nasaghfiruka wa natubu alayk. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.